Yogi Bear and the Magical Flight of the Spruce Goose is a 1987 animated made-for-television film produced by Hanna-Barbera for syndication as part of the Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10 series. Plot Yogi leads his friends on a tour of the Spruce Goose built by billionaire Howard Hughes. While touring, they were accidentally locked inside the plane. To make matters worse, the dome where the plane was located closed up for the night. Oggy Doggy tripped over and opened a door. The gang came to the cockpit. Yogi accidentally pushed a button which magically activated the plane. Soon the gang exited the dome in the plane. In an attempt to avoid a bridge, Yogi pulls back the wheel, causing the spruce goose to lift off. After narrowly avoiding colliding with the Queen Mary Hotel, the spruce goose leaves Long Beach to take the gang on a magical flight. Yogi and his friends listen to the radio about a group of Arctic animals down at the South Pole trapped by a snowstorm and unable to reach the open sea. So they fly down there to help. While flying over to the spot where the animals are trapped, they met Bernice, who had been on the Spruce Goose tour with her mom before getting lost herself. Soon they arrived to save the animals. They did that by having the Spruce Goose plow through the ice like a giant icebreaker and open a channel to the ocean. They succeeded, but their mission wasn't finished yet, as the penguins were attacked by sharks. So they got the plane to act as a bridge to get the penguins safely across the water. Bernice slips off the wings and nearly is eaten by sharks before being rescued by Yogi and Quick Drama Gras, only for Snagglepuss to start the propellers and knock them off the wing onto an ice floe. Luckily, a whale arrives to scare off the sharks by threatening to eat them due to being the bigger fish. Next, Yogi and his friends listen to the radio about a bunch of animals trapped on an ocean liner at the Zelman Sea, long after poachers kidnapped them and left them on the boat to die. At the same time, two aliens, who were scared off from launching their invasion back in Long Beach, attempt to try again with the stranded animals. They transform into Earth animals in an attempt to mingle among them. The gang arrives to save the animals and scare off the aliens again. They tried to tow the ship by tying the ropes to the ship, but the doors opened up and caused the water to enter the ship. Quick drama gras as El Kabong tried to rescue the animals himself but with little success. Then Bernice found a way to save the animals using the spruce goose itself due to having been designed as a cargo plane for use in World War II, but they couldn't find the doors since the nose of the plane was altered after its only flight years ago. The doors were finally located and opened up for the animals to enter the spruce goose. They then locate an island where they could drop the animals off safely at, noticing the word, help, carved in the sand. Afterwards, they realize that the help was from someone stranded on the island in need of rescue. The gang starts a search party, but unbeknownst to them, something is lurking in the bushes listening in on them. The thing in the bushes is revealed to be Mumbly, who has crashed on the island along with the Dread Baron. Mumbly awakens the Dread Baron and attempts to tell him of the plane. The Dread Baron realizes the plane is the Spruce Goose, and that with it he can become rich. He notices Yogi and his gang and realizes his plans could be foiled by them. But after seeing Bernice with the gang, he devises a plan to get on the Spruce Goose and try to take it over. After being rescued from Quicksand, the Dread Baron pleads his case to Yogi, asking him to be merciful and take him and Mumbly off the island, but the rest of Yogi's gang are against it, so Yogi offers the Dread Baron and Mumbly a test, if they can return a bird's egg to its nest, as it was knocked out of the nest earlier, that will prove to Yogi and his friends that they want to become good, and Yogi will agree to take them back to the United States. Dread Baron and Mumbly succeed in their task, and Yogi agrees to take them aboard, but the Dread Baron and Mumbly have other intentions in mind. On the Spruce Goose, D.B. and Mumbly did some cleanup work, so that they won't raise any suspicions when Yogi checked up on them and find that they were doing a great job. Then D.B. throws a party for the gang supposedly as a matter of thanks. 
but the party was a trap as DB traps them in a cargo hold where the party was held. So now Dread Baron takes over the plane and he and Mumbly flew off to where they were supposed to go a long time ago, the island of Mula Mula. They reached Mula Mula, which is filled with natives who worship an idol that looks like Dread Baron. They called it, Malagula. Dread Baron, posing as Malagula, parachuted down to the ground and surprised the natives. Malagula wanted gold, so they gave tons to him. Meanwhile, the gang, still locked in the cargo hold, found a way to get out by tricking the native guarding the door. The gang confronted Dread Baron, but he captured them and sent them to a hut to imprison them. Malagula and the natives surrounded the gang after they landed on the ground following escaping the hut and were about to decide what to do with the gang next when the volcano started to erupt. With the natives and Malagula in shock, the gang escaped back to the plane. The volcano caused a fault to crack and destroy the Malagula idol. This caused the natives to believe the volcano was mad at Malagula and stop worshipping him and chased Dread Baron and Mumbly back to the plane. After that we get one last look at Merkin and Firkin who flew to Mula Mula and again failed to invade Earth. But the plane wasn't out of danger yet, for the weight of all the gold that's in there started to bring it down, stalling the engines. So the gang pushed and shoved the gold out of the plane. Naturally, Dread Baron disapproves, and he and Mumbly jumped out to get it. DB tried to parachute down, but the parachute was taken by Mumbly as the new leader and Dread Baron this time as slave to the natives. The gang flew back to Long Beach, California and the dome home of the Spruce Goose. The next day, the gang went home. Yogi and the gang ran into Bernice and her mother and went to say goodbye to them. Driving home, they hear the stories on the radio of how animals were saved at the South Pole and at the Zelman Sea, to which he claims nobody knows how it happened. Yogi claims he knows how it all happened as he and the gang cheer for the Spruce Goose. Topic. Character voices Dawes Butler as Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, Quick Draw McGraw, Snagglepuss, Augie Doggy. Dave Coulier as Firkin. Don Messick as Boo Boo Bear, Mumbly and Radio Announcer. Marilyn Schreffler as Bernice. John Stevenson as Doggy Daddy and Pelican. Frank Welker as Merkin and Various Animals. Paul Winchell as Dread Baron. Bill Woodson is movie narrator. Topic production credits Yogi Bear and the Magical Flight of the Spruce Goose Executive Producers, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera Written by, Dennis Marks Producers, Bernie Wolf and Jeff Hall Supervising Director, Ray Patterson Starring Dawes Butler as the voice of Yogi Bear Character Voices, Dave Coulier, Don Messick, Marilyn Schreffler, John Stevenson, Frank Welker, Paul Winchell, Bill Woodson Creative Design, IWAO Takamoto based on an idea by, Harry Love Recording Director, Gordon Hunt Animation Casting Director, Andrea Romano Talent Coordinator, Chris Zimmerman Music Composed and Conducted by, Sven Libeck Director of Music Supervision, Joanne Miller Directors, John Kimball, Art Davis, Rudy Zamora, Jay Sarbri, Oscar Defau, Paul Summers Graphics, Araj Perrin, Tom Wogatsky Title, Bill Perez Character Design, B. Wana Takamoda, Kirk Hansen, Celine Weatherwax Animation Directors, Frank Andrina, Joan Drake, Oliver Callahan Layout, Fred Warder, Ron Roche, Bill Proctor, Phil Lewis Key Background Supervisor, All GMUER Key Backgrounds, Eric Heshong, Fred Warder, Jeff Richards, Gloria Wood, Jeff Reich Animation Checking and Scene Planning, Paul B. Strickland Xerography, Starworth Character Color Key Supervision, Allison Leopold Color Key, Elrine Cowan Sound Direction, Alvi Dorman, Stan Wetzel Production Assistants, Mark Lesser, Sandy Binanati, Vicky Casper, Erica Grossbert, Debbie Lathrop Robbins, Ginger Robertson, Robin Strickland, Holiday Jolly Day Bus, Music by, Hoyt Curtin, Lyrics by, William Hanna, Back to the USA, Music by, William Hanna, Lyrics by, William Hanna and Dennis Marks Supervising Film Editor, Larry C. Cowan Dubbing Supervisor, Pat Foley Music Editor, 
Joe Sandusky Sound Editor, David West Show Editor, Gil Iverson Negative Consultant, William Deboer Post Production Supervisor, Jode Eaton Dialogue Editor, Michael Tomac One Quarter Editors, Kelly Foley, Paul Douglas Track Readers, Yvonne Palmer, Jim Hearn, Kay Douglas, Carrie Iverson, Lee Sue Aries Special thanks to the Weather Corporation for its cooperation with the production of this program. The Spruce Goose is located in Long Beach, California. California produced in association with Wong Film Productions Co., Ltd., Cuckoo's Nest Studio Supervising Directors, Shivan Ramsaran, Janine Dawson, Bill Perkins Technical Advisor, Lynn Hogue Production Supervisor, Bob Marples This picture made under the jurisdiction of IATSEEA affiliated with AFL-CIO Copyright 1987 Hanna-Barbera Productions, Inc. All rights reserved. Topic. Home media releases On July 28, 1988, the, 28th of July 1988 the movie was released on VHS in the United States by World Vision Home Video. However, as of 2009, the videocassette is now out of print. On December 7, 2010, Warner Archive released Yogi Bear and the Magical Flight of Spruce Goose on DVD in NTSC picture format with all region encoding. This is a manufacture on demand mod release, available exclusively through Warner's online store and Amazon.com. Topic. Follow-up film Yogi and the Invasion of the Space Bears was released in 1988.